morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome on this beautiful, sunshiny day. Um, let's stand to sing our first hymn, number 580, Rejoice the Lord is King, 580. notices before we begin, but starting with Bands of Marriage. It's always a joy to publish Bands of Marriage, and uh, I do hope I pronounce your names correctly. Please forgive me if I get them a little wrong. So, I published the Bands of Marriage between Philip Anthony Conway and Camilla Jane Dingy. Both parish of residence is here with a qualifying connection to St. Mary's Calston. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. This is for the second time of asking. I did have a sheet of paper here, I've lost it, here it is. Just to bring to your notice, right at the bottom of the, your notice sheet, um, there will be prayer stations for, this is for the Archbishop's Initiative, Thy Kingdom Come, and there will be prayer stations here in church 
from Thursday the 16th to Saturday the 18th, beginning each day with morning prayer at 8.30 through to evening prayer, which will be at 5 o'clock. <coughs> if you would like a booklet, a Novena booklet, they are at the back of the church. Please do take one uh, on your way home. They are lovely booklets. Um, something to read on a daily basis. But uh, it's not too heavy. It's lovely. So please um, do that. And there are sign-up sheets if anybody would like to come into church on those days for an hour of prayer. So please do sign up on your way out. So to our service. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and non-believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and, de and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
seventh Sunday of Easter. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. We sit for our reading. The first reading is taken from um, the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 36, beginning at the 24th verse. The word of the Lord came to me. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, New Testament reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, reading from verse 15. In those days, Peter stood among the believers. Together the crowd numbered 120 people, and he said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who attested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us through, this, through the time that the Lord Jesus went in and, and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to this resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias, <clears throat> when they prayed and said, then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of this ministry and apostleship from which Jesus, uh, Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias. And he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we now stand to sing our gradual hymn number 644, The Head That Once Was Crowned With Thorns, 644.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed, Father, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they, have, they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> so, throughout the Church of England, the, sol the, the Sunday following Ascension Day is kept as a particular focus of prayer for discipleship and vocation to the Church. As Jesus sent out his first disciples to bear witness in his name, so we pray for the ministry and growth of the church today. We are reminded of the baptismal calling of every Christian to be made holy by God's Spirit, and of the many different ways in which we can respond faithfully to God's call. So this Sunday, we are invited to spend some time reflecting upon what this means for us and asking God to guide us. We're asked to pray for a deeper understanding of our vocation as parishes, communities, and individual members of the body of Christ. And we also ask for God's help that we might respond courageously to our calling. That reading from John's Gospel that we have just heard is taken from what is known as the High Priestly Prayer of Christ. But it carries a sense of ambiguity, an ambiguity of both place and time. Jesus prays for his disciples as being held in a tension of place. They are in the world. They do not belong to the world. And John places this prayer in the final hours Jesus spends with his disciples before he goes to his death. Yet there are echoes of the sending out and great commission in the synoptic gospels that follows Jesus.
Jesus' resurrection. As much as in much of John's Gospel, we can read these words as being pre-resurrection or post-resurrection, or both at the same time. Quite confusing, really. But within those ambiguities is a clear calling and mission with which Jesus entrusts his closest friends and through them his followers in all generations. And that includes us today. Jesus calls them to carry forward his work and mission, calling them individually and collectively to witness to his saving work and to bear his name. And all this within the complexities and ambiguities of daily life. But he also prays that they might be sanctified, made holy for the service of the gospel and the taking forward of God's mission in the world today. Being sanctified carries images of sanctuaries and priestly rituals. It brings a sense of being set apart being separated from worldly concerns. But back to that sense of ambiguity, Jesus takes his disciples away and consecrates them in order that they may go out and live fully in the world, equipped and strengthened for that mission. So being sanctified brings a sense of being freed from other preoccupations in order to be fully available for something else. Holiness is at the heart of the calling of God's people today. We are all called to be sanctified, to be made holy in Christ, in order that, in order that we might live more fully and wholeheartedly in the world. We're called to be God's people in a world redeemed and made holy through the death and resurrection of Jesus yet still awaiting the fullness of our sanctification with him. The monk and spiritual writer Thomas Merton says in his book's Seeds of Contemplation, For me, sanctity consists in being myself, and for you, sanctity consists in being yourself. And that, in the last analysis, your sanctity will be mine will never be mine, and mine will never be yours, except in the communion of charity and grace. For me to be a saint means to be myself. Our vocation is not simply to be, but to work together with God in the creation of our own life, our own identity, and our own destiny. Michael Ramsey takes up a similar theme when he speaks of the phrase communion sanctorum as meaning either communion of saints or participation in holy things, an understanding which echoes the ancient invitation to share communion, God's holy things for God's holy people. And Donald Nichols says that one truly holy person is worth more than any number of books about holiness. So these themes of authenticity, of being set apart and yet fully alive, of finding meaning in myself and yet being part of a greater whole and a bigger purpose, weave together in thinking about what it means to be consecrated to God's service today. So as we think about vocation and calling, we might want to call to mind those people who've given us glimpses of holiness. Not just the great saints, but the ordinary people who have been fully themselves, living out their calling to be sanctified in the truth, and yet living hopefully and faithfully in the world. So we might also want to consider the following questions. Where do I feel most fully and completely myself? Where do I sense a connection between my own faith and the mission of God's church? How can I grow in a sense of my own calling to be a follower of Jesus today? 
how might I support and encourage others to live out their calling as part of God's church today? So the community of faith today is a place of diverse ministries, many gifts and rich experience. Within that community, our first calling is always as a child of God, the person God calls us to be. As we seek to live out that calling with faith, trust and hope, so we find ourselves drawn closer to the heart of God and to becoming the holy, sanctified people of God, sent out in God's name. Amen. invite you to stand as we say the creed together. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. A prayer for Ascension Day, which was on Thursday. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. We praise you, Almighty God, for your worldwide church. We pray that Christians around the world can joyfully live out their faith with love and graciousness that brings glory to you. We bring before you all in the Salisbury Diocese who lead us in our worship, both ordained and lay. We remember that... As your followers, we have all received a calling to serve and follow you in our thoughts, words, and our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for peace and hope in our world today. Many are affected by natural disasters or conflicts or are struggling with poverty or lack of food. And we pray for your provision, peace and protection. We pray for our own country, for the royal family, for the government, for regional and district councils and all those in authority. Some words from Christian Aid Week which starts today. We pray that people pushed to the brink of poverty find the strength and opportunity to push back harder and fulfil their hopes and ambitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from whom every family receives its true name, we pray for all members of our families. For those growing up, that they may increase in wisdom and love. For those facing changes, that they may meet them with hope. For those who are weak, that they may find strength. For those with heavy burdens, that they may carry them lightly. For those who are older or frail, that they may grow in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Loving Lord, we lift to you those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Protect those vulnerable to illness around the world. We think of those especially at risk where medical assistance is difficult to access. And lift to you healthcare workers who offer these people their tireless service. Comfort those in despair and help us, your followers, to be moved with compassion to share your love. We pray especially for Herta Buckeridge, Alex Grenfell, Tim Thomas, Avril Davis, Vicky Goodship, Jeff Moment, Jane Coleman, and Nicola Rigby. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we praise you for those who, at any time, made known to us your love and your joy, and who now rejoice in heaven. We pray for all who mourn, especially the family and friends of Elsie Smith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the words of William Penn, in the rush and noise of life, as you have intervals, step within yourselves and be still. Wait upon God and feel his good presence. This will carry, carry you through your day's business. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us offer one another the sign of God's peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed be your God And we say together, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and are all come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us, Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. And we join with them in heaven's song. give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched the untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen.
believing in the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, hear us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
we pray our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste prepared for all people. Amen. Do you please stand? Alleluia, Christ is risen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter fame. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, be with all those you love and pray for, and remain with you always. Amen. So we sing our closing hymn, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 12.
as you leave this place and practice your vocation as you go out into the world, we need some sustenance to be able to do that. Not only spiritual, which I hope we have received through this service, but also with coffee and biscuits. So please do stay behind and uh, join us for coffee. So in the meantime, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.